I love my Old Country Pecos offset and over the last six months I have made some great barbecue on it. And it's a great budget offset smoker option at $500 MSRP. Or is it? Well in my opinion, if you want to buy an Old Country Pecos, you need the accessories and mods I'm going to talk about in this video. So the sticker price is a lot higher than you think. So the first accessory I use is the Kindling Cracker XL. <laughs> I bought this at Northern Tools for about $120 on sale. Currently on the Northern Tools website and also Amazon, it's going for about $150, which is steep, but on Amazon, there are a lot of different budget options available. Now, I can't speak to their quality because I haven't tried any of the cheaper versions, but I will have links to the top rated ones in the pinned comment and the description, along with all the tools I talk about in this video for your reference. So not only is the Kindling Cracker super easy and really fun to use, but it's also super useful. Because in an offset smoker, the log splits are the only fuel that's being used to maintain the pit temperatures. So as you're cooking, if you're adding splits this size, you're gonna have way more temperature swings than if you're adding splits of this size. Also, the firebox on the Pecos is not super large, nor is it insulated. So you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting the coal bed large enough and hot enough to use splits this size especially on really cold days. Now you could always buy a big ax and stand up your splits on top of a stump and hack at them the old fashioned way. But not all splits can stand straight. Plus with me getting older and with my completely terrible ax splitting form, my lower back just could not take the punishment. Moving on to the next tool are these $15 log tongs. Man, I use this tool all the time, and not only just to move the logs to put them in an orientation to max out the airflow, but also to spread out the coals and to break down burned logs into coals. I love this thing not only because I use it for my Pecos, but I also use it a lot on my 250 gallon pit. And for $15, the value is insane. This thing comes in clutch even in everyday life. A couple of days ago, my wife dropped a towel on the side of our washing machine and these tongs were readily available to save the day. This next tool is more of an honorable mention because I'm not completely sold on it myself, but it's this cast iron rack that I got from Tractor Supply Company. So my buddy Rayleigh Smoke told me about this tool and at $25, I had to give it a try. So what this does is it elevates your fire, giving you more airflow underneath your logs and your coals, making it a lot easier to run a good fire and a clean smoke. But here's my problem with it. I was using cowboy lump charcoal from Costco and the quality of that charcoal was absolutely terrible because there were just so many small pieces of coal in that bag. So with the added airflow, these tiny pieces of coal were lighting up really fast and then just falling through the holes of the grate. Eventually, over a few hours, the charcoal would completely cover the bottom of the charcoal grate defeating the purpose of using it in the first place. Granted, this is definitely the fault of the lump charcoal and not the charcoal grate at all, but what really turned me off about this charcoal grate is that it already cracked. Honestly, I think this happened after like the second cook on this grate. Maybe it's me, maybe I threw a log on it too hard, but being cast iron, I thought this thing was built to last. Plus, with the small splits that I'm able to use thanks to the kindling cracker, I don't have any problem burning a clean fire. So if you're using a Pecos or any offset smoker, I just don't think it's super necessary to have the cast iron grate. But in defense of this tool, there is definitely some merit to using it because the iron grate inside of the firebox will do a much better job at retaining heat versus the bare steel at the bottom of the firebox. But I just haven't used the Pecos without the iron grate in really cold weather, so I couldn't tell you if it really makes a difference. And with it being spring now, it's too late to experiment until next winter. So again, I'm not saying that this is a do not buy or even a must buy. I'm just telling you my experience with it so far. And the final accessory I have is this one third size hotel pan that I use as a water pan. I accidentally left this pan inside of my 250 for like the last three or four cooks with no water in it. And it is so just dirty and smoky. It's literally choking me right now having it this close to my face. So I live in the South, which can get super humid, especially in the summertime. So. I actually don't like to add water to the cook chamber because the more moisture that's present inside of the chamber, the harder it is to develop the bark on the meat. Now I've done a little bit of research and I've heard of people using lava rocks or sand as a heat sink instead of water, but I haven't landed on anything yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, then let me know in the comments. And you're probably wondering, why would he need a heat sink if the Old Country Pecos already has a baffle plate in it? Well, this brings us to our first mod, which is the complete removal of the baffle plate. 
So full transparency here, I learned all of these mods from Rayleigh Smoke, and I've also seen other content creators do similar ones like Brisket Medic and Mad Scientist Barbecue. But I'll go into detail as to why I think these mods are absolutely necessary. So the Old Country Pecos is built with the baffle plate with the intention to basically block off the radiant heat from the firebox in order to get an even temperature in the entire cook chamber so you can cook on any part of the cooking grate that you want. But unfortunately, what this does is it creates a hot spot in the center of the cooking grate, which is the point where the smoke is basically passing the baffle plate and then rising up to the top of the smoker. And what's worse is the cooking space from the hot spot to the firebox side of the cooking grate gets absolutely no convection heat turning half of the cooking grade into essentially a smoky oven versus an offset smoker. Rayleigh Smoke has a great video on this subject that he goes way more into detail and I'll have that linked in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. But by removing the baffle plate, you're actually moving the hotspot a lot closer to the firebox side of the cooking grate, giving you a lot more space for convection cooking, which is ironic because they added the baffle plate to give you more cooking space inside of the chamber, but in reality, it limits your space. The next mod I've done is I have extended Ended the smokestack with some six inch stove pipe. So this is six inches in diameter, but it is 22 inches long. So just by looking at this mod, it looks very basic. You got some vent clamps, a stove pipe, a little bit of gasket, super simple, right? Wrong. So I am a complete noob when it comes to power tools or anything handyman related. I'm basically the opposite of that black dude from Holmes. I can fix that. Well, to my surprise, Jeremy Yoder from Mad Scientist Barbecue released his mods video right before I went to the store to buy the supplies for my stack extension. And in his video, he used a six inch to five inch stove pipe adapter, popped it into his smokestack and finished the mod with no additional work needed exactly what I was looking for. However, what I didn't realize was that the Old Country Brazos that Jeremy uses is not only different from my Pecos in the steel thickness, but also in the way that the damper attaches to the smokestack. On the Pecos, the damper is attached by a welded bolt on the inside of the smokestack. However, on the Brazos, the damper is attached on the outside of the stack on a hinge, which gives full clearance for the adapter Jeremy used to be placed directly inside the Brazos smokestack, meaning I wasted $12 on an adapter I can't use. So FYI, if you've seen Jeremy's video and you have an old country Pecos and wanted to do the mods that he did, just be aware of this difference so you don't waste money like I did. So to cut the stovepipe, I actually ended up using some aviation snips, which was great because I didn't have to take out the angle grinder again. And I placed it over the damper and gasket I had placed, and then I screwed the clamp over it and it was ready to go. And what this does is it improves the draw inside of the smoker. And to illustrate this point, I'm gonna be using a real life example with this rack of full spare ribs. So I'm using ribs to demonstrate this, not only because I need more practice smoking ribs, but also because compared to other meats, ribs cook relatively fast. So because the cook time is so short, it can be difficult to get a good crust on ribs. Also, ribs are very delicious and I haven't had them in a while. So I went ahead and put the ribs on the Pecos and we're gonna see very early on in this cook, these ribs are gonna get a beautiful color. So it's only been about an hour and a half of cooking and as you can see, these ribs have a very beautiful color already. They're completely dry and that's because of that awesome convection that we're getting in this offset. And the reason for this is that the speed of the air traveling over the meat has increased because of that stack extension. This speeds up the Maillard reaction, which is the process that occurs when the crust or bark develops on the meat. And it's sped up because the Maillard reaction does not begin until the surface of the meat is dry. So basically the increased air speed is drying out the meat faster, allowing for the crust to develop a lot quicker. And this is why people say that the offset is the king of barbecue, because it operates in a way that gives you the darkest, Best crust possible. So with the removal of the baffle plate and the extension of the smokestack, we've essentially transformed this old country Pecos from a bottom up cooker with okay convection into an offset that performs more like a $4,000 custom pit. So I recently moved, so it has been absolutely hectic for me and my family, and I have not had a lot of time to cook. Just coming outside and smoking up these ribs has been so much fun. So with the mods that I did to the smoker, I was so impressed, like seriously, how fast these ribs got color. Like the crust was already set at like hour two and a half, and I was just waiting for the fat to render because the color looks so beautiful already. So if you have a Pecos, then make sure that you do these mods to your smoker because it doesn't cost much. I mean, the supply it took was like 20 or 30 dollars and the offset just runs so much better if you do these mods to your pecos so let's go ahead and see how these ribs turned out look at the color on these ribs that looks 
Fantastic. Wow. So I am notorious for cutting ribs terribly, so I'm hoping that I at least improve a little bit on this cut. Oh my gosh. It's horrible. Oh my goodness. Yo, how... Yo, man, I'm so confused. Are you supposed to cut it slantedly? What is this? I figured it out at the end, but it's a little too late. Well, maybe one day I'll learn how to cut ribs, but anyways, they're all cut up. I cannot wait to eat these and tell you what I think. Look at that. Fat is so gummy on there. Bottoms up. Mm. Wow. Over the last year, Old Country has increased the price of the Pecos by $100. Before this price increase, I would have crowned Old Country Pecos as the king of budget offset smokers, but sadly, after this increase, you could definitely make a case for other budget offsets out there. So if you're in the market for a smoker, you may want to consider paying more for a custom quality offset smoker. I recently bought a 250 gallon pit and I have been having a blast smoking on it. And you can see my 250 in action where I smoked brisket, chicken, and pork butt in the video on your screen right now. 